we will make you feel born again. Good evening, I'm King Diamond. I'm here to tell you the story of the Puppet Master. It takes you back to the 18th century in Budapest, Hungary. It's about me as a puppet, hanging on a wall, reflecting back on the past 18 years and all the blood I had to see, all the misery I had to go through. We're in Budapest, in Hungary. It's the 18th century. I'm gonna tell you what it was like for me when I first time saw this absolutely fantastic puppet show with these puppets that are almost human size. It's Christmas, snowy, it's cold outside. There are lines and lines of people outside waiting to get in. This show has been sold out for so long. The people are waiting to get into the theater. I'm there in line and it's dark and cold, perfect night for a Christmas show. When I finally get in there, sit among the people, there is this strange, tense feeling as we are waiting, anticipating the curtain to fall. We've heard so much about these puppets on stage that it's magical. You can't believe what you're seeing. And suddenly it's like, oh, shh, here come the puppets, you know. And I start looking over in the wing and I notice, wait a minute. I think I see a few shadows over there. Maybe there's some of the puppets sitting over there or waiting to walk in. And then I see the puppet master come up the stairs and there is like this walkway high above, almost up by the ceiling. And there he operates all these strings and stuff. And he actually leads a couple of puppets in on stage. Like, wow, there they are, one, there's two, three puppets coming in, in line. And halfway through the show, this really strange thing happens. The puppets are moving and doing things and they look so lifelike. The skin, you know, is like, it looks like human skin. And suddenly the puppet master, he drops all the strings. They land on the floor and the puppets that was like standing there with these strings, now they're on the floor. They just stand like this still. Nothing happens to them and then they start to move. The little drummer boy is one of the puppets up there and I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh my, no way. It's almost like his eyes are looking straight at mine, can't be real. And then I suddenly see that on the skin of his hands, there's a little cut and I see blood from this cut and that can't be real, that, they, that can't be. This is too weird. And then he starts playing his drum. And it scares me because this is too much magic. And I do believe in magic. The other people in here don't quite believe that this could be magic. And then at the end of the show, we hear about the puppet master coming down from his walkway, taking the bow with what he calls his children, all these almost life-size puppets. And we move into the next song, which is Magic. It's after the show, it's outside, it's cold, it's damp. I've just gotten outside the door. Victoria, who is another main character in the story, has walked out on the other side. And we're standing there just waiting and the people are walking out of the theater. They're all heading for home. And they, like I said before, they don't believe that what they saw was magic. But we do, both of us. And for some weird reason, we are getting drawn to each other, looking into each other's eyes, realizing that we have everything in common that we would want to have in common. We're getting drawn so close that I can feel there is something else between us. There's some kind of I would call it evil, surrounding especially me. I feel something on my shoulder. 
as if one of the spirits from the theater has come out with me and is now sitting on my shoulder, a puppet spirit, whispering in my ear with its cold breath, telling kiss me Victoria. to kiss her. Kiss Victoria. And I do kiss Victoria. And that's the seal of our eternal love. Kiss Towards the end of magic you hear about the fact that kiss Victoria has gone to the theater alone one night when I couldn't come along. And she never returned. So I realized that something is wrong. I have got to go to the theater and find her. There is something wrong here. There is something wrong here. I'm in this backyard. It's like a courtyard, I would call it. And I notice that there is stairs leading down to a cellar. I'm about to walk down there because this must be a back entrance to the puppet theater. And as I'm about to walk down these stairs, I see the handle move and the door starts to open. And I quickly hide behind some trash cans. And it's this 300 pounds of flesh, emerentia, coming out, floating up the stairs. She gets up there and looking, what? What is she doing? What is this? And then I see this knife shining in the moonlight. I see her walk over to this cart, this kind of thing that you pull after you on two wheels that you can carry things on. I see her grab that and I see this big knife suddenly flicker in the moonlight. And I'm wondering where is she going with that knife? She walks out through the gates and uh, I follow her. Without her seeing me, I follow her through these narrow streets of Budapest. It's cold, it's damp, and I keep following her, hiding in the shadows. Then she suddenly turns down an alleyway, and I see there's someone lying on the ground. It must be a homeless. Then I see the knife come up high. The moonlight just flickers. And the knife comes down so hard, it goes all the way into his chest. That's where she leaves the knife. So as little blood as possible can escape his body, because she will need it later. I'm looking and I'm surprised that blood is not red, not in the dark. In the dark of night, blood is black. Dark of night, blood is black. Then she wraps him in a sack and puts him on this cart. She's got to get out of there before she gets caught. So she rushes back to the old theater. And there in the backyard, I follow her all the way. And I see her take this body off the cart, down into the dark and into the cellar. And she leaves the door open. It's a jar. And I wonder why. I follow her inside and I walk on. After her in these narrow hallways, every time she turns a corner, I sneak up fast and I see where she goes. Suddenly, after one corner, she's gone. I can't see her. But I do see a light from a room up ahead. When I peek into this, into this lit room, it's gloomy. it's gloomy. And it's a horror show that I see. Nothing but horror. And then I feel the blow. I'm knocked out. so dark wherever I am. As I open my eyes, I can barely see a thing in here. Then slowly but surely my eyes get used to it. They're like suck on the darkness, suck the darkness away. And then slowly but surely I start to be able to make out these things, these shelves that are everywhere up against the wall. And upon these shelves I see all the puppets. All the puppets from the theater, they're almost human size and so grotesque looking. This human-like skin, all these eyes that are down there. And suddenly as I look around and I see all these eyes, 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 eyes. it cannot be. But I'm sure, I am dead sure, I know those eyes. I see the eyes of Victoria, my love. 
I cannot believe it's her eyes sitting in this puppet's head. But I know it's true. It is definitely her eyes. Blue eyes. They're alive, but they are so dead. They're alive, but they are so dead. The puppet master and his wife appear in the cellar for the first time. I see them there. I'm tied to this wall still, you know, and the puppet master comes in. And I notice that there is an altar in here. It must be an altar, full of ancient books, black candles, everything you need for a ritual. The puppet master actually starts performing this ritual. I suddenly hear his voice speaking these ancient tongues. I can't understand any of it. But I start feeling so strange inside. It's almost as if somebody's taking my mind out of my body, just out of my head, just pulling it out. And I start getting panic. I just feel panic all over. And I kick one of these giant shelves full of these little jars with black liquid in them. Actually, it's blood. One of them falls all the way to the floor and smashes on the floor. It's just red over me. The puppet master turns around from the altar and looks straight at me. And he says, How dare you disturb my work? And he did something he shouldn't have done. He interrupted his own ritual. And what happened from him not citing the ritual the proper way is that he gave my eyes eternal life. What he's doing in this ritual apart from this is he's trading souls with the demon that suddenly shows itself up in the symbol upon the wall. This demon he, he has dealt with many, many times. He knows this demon as well as hell. He knows everything. The demon will give him a certain kind of soul in return, a magical soul. A soul that can keep human flesh alive. Eyes, ears, hands, everything it can keep alive. And that's how they use the puppets in the theater. That's why they look so alive. At the end of the ritual, I feel so exhausted as if almost everything has been taken out of my body. And I slowly faint away. I wake up after the ritual and I find myself strapped to this hospital bed. I see the puppet master and his wife standing there and they say to me, First you eyes, then you We will make you feel born again. And then they say, No more me, my friend. Then I see the scalpel shining in the his hand. His wife has got all the jars for blood. They are not going to spill a drop. Then comes the cutting. I'm fearing for my life as that scalpel gets close to my eye. He starts cutting away on my eye. Just one eye and it comes off. Down into a jar. He cuts another eyelid off into the same jar. It looks like I'm bleeding. It's like I'm crying blood. Then he has this tongue he puts in around my eyeball and grabs it and he pulls it out of the socket. And then his fingers grab it and he takes it and he pulls it out. And the nerve string is just hanging there. It's the only thing that holds it back. And then comes the scissor. Snap. And he takes the eyeball. And remember my eyes have eternal life now. So this eyeball is taken and is put over into this puppet's head. These puppets are almost life-size. He puts it in there. As it is put into the eye socket of the puppet, it still sees. And that eye is looking back at where I am. I'm sitting there with this black hole bleeding. And I see that from this eyeball in the puppet's head. At the same time as my good eye is looking back, seeing this 
we had puppet with one of my eyeballs and you can see the whole time and it hurts. Then comes the next eye, tongue, pull out, fingers, uh, stretch, snap. The other eye goes over into the little puppet's head. Now both my eyes, I can't see anymore, but I can. And I'm watching myself. This head with two empty sockets bleeding like hell. And then the scalpel works again and he starts cutting and cutting and cutting. They pull my nails off with the tongue. They cut my skin off. My arms, they're gonna use it for this puppet. They're gonna build a puppet out of me. And they do. And at the end of this horrible, horrible ritual of this scalpel just massacring my body, I look from the puppet from the puppet's head I see only remains of what used to be me. There is no more me at all. All I see is Emerentia as she grabs my carcass and throws it in the trash. That's the end of me. In Blood to Walk, they have made a puppet out of me. I'm actually sitting on my shelf. I have my little jar of blood that's going to be used for me every time they're going to bring me back to life. I'm sitting there, I'm looking at all the other puppets because my eyes are eternal, theirs are not. They all need injections to start functioning. I need injections too. And it must be our own blood, otherwise we will not function right. But today, Something special is going to happen. As the puppet master and his wife comes down to us and says, Hello, Hello my, my children. My children. In blood, I'll teach you today. They take Victoria down from her shelf and me from mine, and they set us on the floor facing each other, looking at each other. Well, she doesn't see much because her eyes are so dead, but I see her. And then I feel the needle go in, Imarentia injecting my own blood, because it has to be my own blood. As the blood goes in, I feel my skin tingle. My eyes, as you know, they're alive all the time. But the skin, it starts tingling now. And I feel like I can stretch it a little bit. I can actually move very little, but I can. And then, I see the same thing happening to Victoria. I see her eyes slowly come alive. For the first time in a while, we're actually looking at each other's eyes and we recognize each other's eyes. We know what have happened to each other. We know what's been going on and we totally recognize. We don't need words to speak, our eyes speak for us. It's like our minds are now in our eyes. It's our eyes that are our brains. Our skin is our muscles, and we try to move them a little. The puppet master sees that we're alive, and he says, That's enough for today. Put them away. At that point, we have now trained for many, many days. What we're actually doing is we get the shots, we can move a little bit, we learn how to stretch our skin, that our skin become muscles, you know, so that we can actually do these strange little movements, you know. We can actually take little steps and walk. Victoria and I, we are sitting on our shelves on opposite walls, spending whatever is left of this hour that the blood works every day. I mean, they bring us back to life every single day for about an hour. That's how long the blood will, will actually work in our bodies. We might have half an hour left every day, maybe 20 minutes, and we spend those 20 minutes just looking at each other, talking to each other with our eyes, remembering all the good times we had. This is all we've got. This is our life now. 
There is no turning back. There is no turning back. This is what we have to live with. And believe it or not, the love was so strong that it was worth it. At this point, the puppet master has gotten a weird idea in his head. He wants Victoria to dance for him. So he says, Dance for me, puppet girl. I can see in her eyes that I can't dance. I never dance. I have no chance of doing this. He's asking the impossible. And I hear him, dance, dance, dance. And then she takes a step. She takes a second step. Before the third step, she stumbles into some of the shelves, the ones that hold all the blood in little glass jars. Six of them are coming down. They smash all over the floor. There is just blood and puppet life all over the floor. The puppet master explodes in rage and says to him, Arantia, his big, big wife, send her away from here. Send her as far away as you can. Maybe the other theater in Berlin. Yes, send her to Berlin. We have half an hour left now, the blood in us. This training session went totally dead wrong. We're sitting there in the darkness, knowing deep, deep inside that this could be the end. They're gonna send her away tomorrow morning. She has half an hour left of seeing. I have much, much more because my eyes are eternal, as you know. And as we sit there, Victoria asked me with her eyes, please, actually, she's pleading to me, please tell me this is not goodbye. And I tell her, do you remember the butterfly? And she says, it made me cry. I know. But remember, we dried its wings so it could fly again. But deep inside, I know, this is not the way it should be. This is close, close, close to the end. We might only have 10 minutes left now of what is our life together. And then I tell her that I would die for you if I could. And I swear that I will find you wherever they send you. I will come and get you. And then she asked me if, uh, what if I can't survive without you by my side? I say, then wait for me, wait. Wait on the other side, because I'll be there. Then Victoria says, I can barely see you anymore. And I say, don't forget the butterfly. It didn't die. And she says, I love you. And I say, I love you too. Then you hear Victoria's voice say, I can't see you anymore. And I know this is it. It's over. Never again. It's over. So I whisper goodbye, my love. And that's the last little drop of blood left in her skin that now went away. She will never see me again. I can still see her. I see her the next morning as they come down and pull her off the shelf and they shove her into this big, big box. This big thing painted on it saying Berlin. I see them carry that box away and I can do nothing. But I swore that I would find her. I'm gonna do my damnedest to get that done.
it's Christmas time again. It's one year from I saw that Christmas show. I'm trying to make plans for how can I get sold? How can I get to that theater in Old Berlin? There must be a way I can do this. I want to get away from here. I got to get away from the theater. I got to go find Victoria. And I have a plan. I'm going to screw up the biggest show of the year. I'm going to screw up the Christmas show. The puppet master has turned me into the little drummer boy for this year's Christmas show. And he's going to regret it. What I'm going to do when I get on stage and you hear that, the audience clapping, blah, blah. And I get on stage and I start playing my silly little drum. I make myself fall right on my face. The drum splinters in a thousand pieces on the floor. It's all over the stage. And I can't help myself from laughing knowing that the puppet master is going to explode in a rage. And he does. And sure enough, I get sold. They sell me to a little shop down in a back street. A second-hand puppet shop where no one comes. Very few people come in there. Let's give them that little. There, I'm hanging on a wall with a nail through my throat. There, I've been hanging for 18 years now. Looking, looking, and looking. That's all I can do. Just hang in there, living, dead, looking. I see all these little kids coming wanting puppets they look no that's scary i don't like that puppet it looks sick that's what they say about me i look sick you know i don't look sick i look just like you but these kids my eyes they watch them they watch them as they walk around as I realize, I will never be sold again. It's over. I am on this wall forever living dead. And during the last little nice outro written by Andy, you get the feeling of where me and Victoria are very far from each other, never to meet again, ever, never, ever. It's over. But I must tell you before I finish about what great success the puppet master and his wife had with their theater. They became more popular than ever. They even had children themselves, a son and a daughter. And the rumor is that they're gonna open a new theater in London town for kids. Think about that. The puppet master and his wife's sick children are gonna open a theater for kids. What kind of puppets do you think they're gonna have? I say no more. I say good night and sleep tight. Ha, ha, ha.